I guess you can't see the full screen. I wish they just put the full screen up. Are we in right now? No, live video is starting. Oh, we're yes. now live. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, hello. We're just going to get everybody, everything up and make sure we're running good. Um, see, comments just show down here. They're just a huge lag time. That's right. Okay. Let's wait a few minutes. Let people join on. Yeah, I'm not showing on here yet. Should be. Yep, we're here. Okay. We're now live. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if my comments are going to be weird again. Do you remember that? Show me what yours does with the comments. Let's get this up so I can see comments. So I'm commentating. Well, <laughs> I'm looking at comments during this one. Okay. Um, see, no comments. Why do I not get the comments? Because you're the one doing the live right now. Is that why? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to use mine. Well, hello, Miss Lisa. Oh, <laughs> sorry, we're making connections because my live, so it makes it a little tough when I look at this, it doesn't show any of your comments. So if I'm looking at comments, how's everybody doing on this fabulous Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. Lisa, do you hear us okay since we see your comment? It's so good to see you. So let us know if you can hear us okay. out of the group. Well, it's supposed to just stay in the group. I didn't knock myself out. <laughs> there we go. That's there what I need. Go. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Hello, Sheena. Whoops. It's okay. There we go. There you go. Hi, guys. Hi, Karen. <laughs> oh, and she can hear us booth. Both. Booth. <laughs> hear us booth. It is a full moon on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. That tonight. Tonight. Tonight is Wednesday. <gasps> and tonight is the full moon. First one of the year freeing without being in any kind of retrograde whatsoever. Wow. So tonight is an amazing time to release all that no longer serves you. And get your manifestations ready for the new moon. Yeah, it's interesting because normally full moon is all about release, which it is, and it mm -hmm. has been leading up to it. But for this one in particular, I'm hearing get ready. It's intense. Like, I'm feeling get ready. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard the same thing, manifestations. And yes, usually new moon manifestations, but I'm hearing to start today. Yes. It's like a build up to it. Yep. It's, it's like a crescendo of energy. It's a release and a it's almost like you need something more to focus on. Yeah. Like you need something to focus on instead of all the releasing we've been doing. Right. And this is like one of the, I don't want to say final because we release all the time, right? But this is like a huge purge, if you will, of all the things that maybe we've been holding on to and all the deep dives that we've all been doing healing wise. And this is that final push to release all of that. And then, like she said, focus on the manifestation and start getting that rolling because this is a time of transformation like deep dive healing and transformation big time oh yeah. and i'm feeling that like i'm getting buzzy on that oh i'm i'm zinging from head to toe there's some major shifting happening serious and my hair is up as usual um because yeah we've both been in session so the energy in this office is pretty amazing i'm not gonna lie <laughs> And she's got her megawatt crystal sitting in front of us, her Lemurian, which we can feel definitely. Wanted to play. Wanted to sit on the table. Usually it's across the room, but today, no. So here we are, loves. I really just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Has, it, and you can see on the side, I think this is the side. I don't know if that shows up right here. There's, um, shift it that way. Turn it. I don't know if you can see those, but there's all these lines in it. Those are like key codes of information wisdom codes. It's the coolest thing ever. I love the Marian. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. Maybe that's why it just won't let me see. Oh, there we go. Did you figure it out? 
I think I did, but I'm going to keep yours up just in case. Nice. <laughs> All my, right. Yep. So we are doing Monique's story tonight. Um, her awakening story, her intuitive story, her amazingness. Um, I'm so, so happy nice. you guys are all here. So Me too. Yeah. Um, and keep in mind, you know, um, Sarah did an amazing job at allowing herself to be vulnerable and sharing part of her story last week. It, You know, we're not going to share all of the story because we don't want to keep you here for a long time. So we'll be sharing other parts as it comes out. In fact, we've already made a list of different things. Um topics that go along with parts of our story so we'll be able to share more stuff at, at different times so but this is just to introduce ourselves to the people in the group that don't know us and don't know our story right, right? and i totally winged mine I, I had no clue what i was going to say and i just this is what they they actually said i needed to share and mm -hmm. um same yeah same. and as i said last time it was my greatest fear actually um being in the spotlight, even if it's with friends and with people I love, it's still, it's interesting. <laughs> it was interesting, but I did it. It has so. its own challenges at times, yeah. but you yeah. did it gracefully and beautifully. You. You're going to tonight, so. Thanks, love. I will take that. <laughs> okay. I will take that. And all the peeps are here because I am like <sighs> yeah. buzzing. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep the crystal there. I don't think so because I'm Cause actually my, starting to get a headache right here. Do you mind if I, I feel like it needs to play a... Yes. Yeah. Like a protection mode? Okay, I'll yeah. be back. Okay, so do we want to go ahead and set sacred space? And yeah. Okay, want everybody, everybody. Um, feet firmly on the ground. Close your eyes, relax, take a deep breath in. And release all that no longer serves you. I'm just going to ask command and request, creator of all that is, that where each and every person is at any time that they watch this, that where they are be clean and clear to the normal fashion, filled with love, light, healing, energy, unconditional love, set a sacred space. That they know that they are wanted, valued, treasured, admired, loved unconditionally, and that they're worthy of all those things. Mm -hmm. Just say yes to receive. Thank you, create that name. <laughs> so I will be in a supportive role tonight, asking questions as guided, and they're like all <laughs> right now, and um, looking at your uh, replies or your questions and trying to bring it in in a way that doesn't interrupt flow. So if I miss something, mm -hmm. go ahead and ask it again, bring it back on, because um, it may just not have been the place to say it at that moment, or I might have missed it, because... <laughs> It can happen. Especially if people are commenting out at the same time, it kind of zips up. It does, fast. and then it goes. So yeah. make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, I'm Monique England. Um, once, once upon a time, just kidding, I won't do that. I, won't do that. Um, um, I have been on this journey for a very, very, very long time. Um, I was very intuitive when I was little. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Just come on in, buddy. It's all good. <laughs> Woo. So I, they make my head itch when they get really close. I can't help it. Um, I've been intuitive since I was little. When I was younger, um, I was extremely uh, clairvoyant, clairaudient. Um, I could thank you. To the point of freaking my mom out. I'm not going to lie. I'm the youngest in my family, so <clears throat> um, I used to freak my mom out quite a bit. I was that little kid that would sit on the floor and stare, like down the hallway, <laughs> because I could see what was down there. <laughs> my mom would be like, go to bed. I'm like, uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh, I'm 
not going back there, right? So, um, part the for me, it's kind of bittersweet, but the best part of my story when I was really little, um, my dad died um, when I was a baby, and they actually buried him on my first birthday. And that allowed my dad to have a big part in my life. He's been with me ever since as a, as a spirit guide, actually. Um, and, hi daddy, as he steps in. That was the only way that he could be in my life in this in this existence because of choices they had made and some things that had happened. Um, it, it just, that was the only way it could be. And so um, when my dad came to that death door, he had a major heart attack. Um, he chose to take it so that he could be with me um, because he knew that I needed, I was gonna need the help and guidance. Um, and all the rest of his kids were grown. Um, the next one closest to me out of my dad's kids, she's 18 years older than I am. So huge, huge. I was the epitome of the oops baby. We're just going to park that there. Um, who knew, right? Um, Thank goodness. All things for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I just remember um, being gifted when I was little. And it was not always fun. Um trying to trying to convince my mother and try to talk to her about the things that I was seeing and the things that I was hearing and it was it was a big challenge um I had a single mom and she just didn't really put a lot of time into us kids um I I do I think I do remember um my mom was always seeking answers. She was very intuitive herself. Um, she could pick things up quite, quite quickly. Um, but, <laughs> but I remember we lived in Idaho and we lived in this big, huge manor house that they turned into apartments. It was all single ladies and single moms that lived in the building. There were no men there. And, um, we had the biggest apartment. It was kind of weird. Um, because we actually had the basement along with it was a two level apartment it was huge it was huge and so my sister and I had our rooms downstairs but my sister had like an official bedroom the other side of the basement was this huge unfinished area and in the far corner was the washer and dryer and then in the front corner my mom created a bedroom for me so I had the biggest room in the house <laughs> kind of cool when you're like I think I was in second grade um first grade maybe second grade first grade I don't know anyway I was little so <laughs> I remember my mom would say go to bed I'm like so I'd go downstairs I'd go to bed and then I'd usually end up coming back up because she'd hear me messing around and so I'd come back up anything drink water go to the bathroom whatever it was stall and she'd be like, go to bed. She'd get really mad at me. I'm like, I can't. Why not? Because the men won't quit talking. <laughs> what men? The men under the stairs. Because my my room, you know, it was huge. And then there was, it was, it was unfinished. And so you could actually go through a doorway, which would have had a door, and climb under the stairs. It was unfinished. And actually, because I was little, I could wiggle through all the beams and actually go into the back of my sister's long, huge walk-in closet because it wasn't finished, right? And my sister and I shared the closet um, and because it had a lot of built-ins and so, you know, whatever. And so, <laughs> yeah, so my mom would freak out, right? Freak out. She was stomping down the stairs and then she'd go in there and she's like, show me. And I'm like, they're right there they're right in front of you and so she got really frustrated with me and of course that led to tears and yeah the whole thing um i also that was that was a really big place for us that we lived in um for me intuitively um there was a lot of stuff going on of course we had a prostitute that loaded upstairs i was allowed to talk to her it was a very interesting place let me tell you the rest of us There's were all lots of energies there was a ton of energies right there and that was in boise um was so they're asking me they're like pushing me yeah here. like did they do that with you oh yeah they're oh yeah they're like ask ask yeah so was your mom psychic she was very intuitive i think she could have been um it, like anything else it's that spiritual muscle the more you use it the stronger it gets she was very empathic um hmm. and i do believe um 
Okay, back up. Thank you. Um, I do believe that she really, truly could have been if she had allowed herself. She was always on a mission seeking answers. But she wasn't going within. She was always looking to somebody else. Um, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, we all need and feel like we need confirmation, validation at any absolutely. point in There's our journey. There, there absolutely is. Yep. But <clears throat> in, the, in this, again, with this same place, my mom... <laughs> that's funny because they told me to talk about this too my mom had this woman um, I cannot tell you her name I do not know what she looks like because I was never allowed to be around when she had this psychic woman come in um, so uh, my mom would be like well and the woman was like kids are too open um, she needs to be outside. You know, the kids need to be outside. Whatever. I was in grade school, obviously. My sister was in junior high. Um, so, mom would pretty much kick my sister downstairs. I had to be outside. But then my mom was like, you can't even be on the property. So, I think it was twofold. I think, one, I think my mom was trying to protect me some from this woman. Um, but I also feel like, well... The woman told my mom a lot of stuff that just never came true. But she did hit some things that were correct. And we know that it's choices and timing and energy and all that. But some of it was ridiculous. <laughs> I found out as an adult of what she had said. Um, but I do know as a, as a small child, whenever that woman left, my house felt icky. Like, it, I didn't like the way it felt. Um, things seemed to kind of erupt. Um, and I could never understand it, of course, because I was little, right? And I really didn't have my mom's support to be able to say, hey, this is, this is what's going on. Because I would try and she would shoot, she'd shut me down pretty hard. Um, and so, <clears throat> totally different parenting than what people have now, for sure, for sure. Um, no judgment, I guess my mom, she did, she did what she felt she needed to, but, um, you know, it, it it was it never felt good, and I could never explain that because I didn't have the words to tell my mom, other than I don't I don't like it when she comes over. It feels gross. It feels bad. It's scary. And of course, yeah, my mom. So you was, learned a lot about different energies. You I learned, really did. I really mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. about really tapping in and be like, ooh, that doesn't feel good. And and there was one instance in particular. Um, mom had kicked me out and I was like Ugh. and of course I already knew I'm like is that lady coming over today my mom goes what lady I'm like you know the 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 lady the one I always have to leave for <laughs> she wouldn't even tell me her <laughs> name she wouldn't even tell me her name and she's like of course which that kind of irritated my mom she's like yes now get out of the yard <laughs> whatever so there I was down the street the park or whatever and so <clears throat> For whatever reason, because I was a very stubborn child too, um, for whatever reason, well, one, I wanted to come home, but I kept checking to see if her car was still in the driveway, and of course it was. So at one point I was like, oh, I really got to pay though, right? So I went and I was like, screw it, I'm just going to run in the back door, use the bathroom, and then I'll leave. The may or may not even know I'm in there. And as I was getting ready to go up the few stairs to go in the back door, the the window was cracked open and I could hear them standing in the kitchen talking and so like any nosy little kid I just stood under the window so that I could hear what they were talking about and the woman had told my mom a few things which I can't recall the thing that stuck out to me and and it, it didn't make me feel good was she told my mom your girls are very intuitive they are both very gifted um and you need to watch out for them. But the way she said that wasn't like you need to protect them and keep them. It was like you need to, like we were a threat pretty much. And she said, and especially the little one. Well, I was the little one. So what the hell does that mean? And so I was like, Ugh. rude. <laughs> right? And so I was like, that hurt my feelings. Because I'm like, I don't even know you, lady. Um... So then I heard them walking to the back door. So, of course, I ran around the building. It was this huge, huge place. So I ran around. And by the time I got back around, because I was chunky, by the time I ran all the way back around, she was leaving. 
And I, my mom was like, oh, you're here. Come in. So I went in. And the house... I have never felt the house feel like that. It's felt bad before. But it was thick. It felt like ew. Ew's just thick. Like walking through a vat of slime. How old were you when this happened? I was in second grade. Wow. First or second grade. That's like... I was six or seven. Yeah, that's like negative energy 101. Oh, dude. It was it was brutal. And it was thick. Hi, Robin. Like, it was thick. It felt like walking through a vat of slime. That's the only thing I can mm. I can and tell you. And it just felt heavy. Um, it I kept saying, "What's burning? What's burning?" Because that it that's what it smelled like. <laughs> My mom's getting irritated. Nothing's burning. I'm like, "Are you cooking?" That yeah. Well, that's how it kind of went in my house, but um, and so, but that's what it felt like. So I remember her mm-hmm. saying, um, "Go, go take a shower and get ready for bed." Um, and so I went into the shower. Now, the way it was set up is, you know, it had Jack and Jill door f- from the kitchen and into the dining room. It was kind of a weird shape. Um, and it was like shub tower, you know, shub, shub, shub tower, the tub and the tower. Jeez. Um, right here, the commode, the pedestal sink, and, you know, messing cabinet with the mirror on it. So you pull back the shower curtain, you're looking at the mirror and the sink and whatever. And, I remember I didn't want to go in there. I, I just didn't want to go in there. Um, I didn't even eat dinner that night because I didn't even want to go into the dining room. I didn't want to be anywhere in the house. Um, and so I did. I, I went in and took a shower and, um, you know, saw some things when I came out of the shower that absolutely terrified me. Um, but I also knew at that point that I did not have my mom's support, so I couldn't go to her for help. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was at that moment I I got dressed. Um, and, and this moment has terrified me for a long time. Um, I, I've since healed from it. Um, and now, looking back and expanding my vision, I can see that, you know, my dad was there, angels were there. They were never going to let anything happen to me. But it was a hugely traumatic event mm-hmm. for a little kid. Um, and it was that moment as I was walking down the stairs um, that I was like, I'm not doing this. I- I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Yep. And that's when I shut it down. Um, which most kids do between 7 and 10 for whatever reason. Either they don't have the support at home or they're like, yeah, this isn't fun. <laughs> whatever it might be. Um, for me, I didn't have the support, and so I, I shut it down, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this, and, um, I had <laughs> made a promise that, okay, well, uh, and this is gonna sound awful, but at that time, all right, well, when you're, when you're gone, then whatever, and that's where I parked it, so, um, then things got really interesting for me because everything shifted. The clairvoyance went away. I still see stuff out of the corner of my eye. Um, but the clairvoyance pretty much, like, it was almost like a tunnel. Like, everything was bright. I could see everything, and it just got really small. And then it was like, boop, nothing. Um, the clear audience for a lot, most of that went away. I would still get things every now and again. But what happened is then everything else dialed up. So spiritual knowing was like so it almost allowed the other senses to grow because it shut off the one the two predominant ones yeah Yeah. and because everybody has all four you have two dominant and two non so i shut down the dominant Mm -hmm. ones um you know 99 percent of the way and the other two like dialed up and so i the the claircognance for me as a little kid was on point like i think that was even more creepy to my mom than me just seeing everything (laughs) honestly i would just know stuff and there was no way i should know um and then the empathic stuff really kicked up too which we know a lot of some of that is you know trauma based you know most empaths are created Mm -hmm. because of trauma um, but some of it are just our natural gifts and abilities too. And so those really dialed up. So then it was, hmm. but at the same time, I was still wrestling with 
oh, that's gone. So then I felt like Helen Keller, like, felt like I was bumping around in the dark because I was so used to seeing everything. Wow. Um, <clears throat> that then I was, like, really jumpy. And so I went through this ugly little transition where the slightest movement would startle me so badly um, because I couldn't see anything like I normally could. And so, and at the same time, my, my little body was readjusting <laughs> Case in point, my sister and I shared that huge closet. And we're talking, this is in the 70s. So it had really ugly orange, burnt orange shit, carpet. Yes, yes, it did. And so I got to the point where I was no longer allowed to even go in the closet to get my own clothes. Because every time I turned the light switch off, the light bulb would explode. Wow. Glass everywhere. Um... One, because I was trying to shove all my energy back down. Mm -hmm. And two, you know, I was it was that internal battle. It was that internal mm -hmm. wrestling. And so, yeah, I got cut. I can't tell you how many times my sister did. Of course, she always got screamed out to clean it up because I was usually bleeding at that point. And so it got to the point where I was told mm -hmm. I could no longer go in the closet. So my sister dressed me every day, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and so, yeah. So um, that was... That, those were like the major things for me as a little kid. Um, I, I do remember we moved a lot. And so <clears throat> I would get really upset because I was an empath. And I just knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that I'd never see people again. And my mom would be like, why are you crying? You know, I was always told I cried too much. I was too sensitive. And all the shit that people tell kids, which, ugh. um, and why are you crying? Cause we're never going to see him again. Yes, we will. No, we didn't. Um, and then what I found too, as I got older, mm -hmm. um, junior high, I had a lot of premonitions that it was sometimes stupid stuff. Like mm -hmm. I, I'd go to bed and I'd have a dream that me and the neighbor girl, we'd go, her mom came out and said, hey, would you two run down the Safeway for me? And, oh, here, take the wagon. And, oh, well, can Sadie go? Sadie was their Cocker Spaniel. The very next day, her mom that was out. Happen. Yeah, exactly. And it was just weird stuff. <clears throat> but I also had bigger events, too. Car acts, um, all different kinds of stuff. Mom would get a new car. So your premonition really came in. It really came in. And I was yeah. in junior high. It was like, what the hell would you do with this? Um, I escaped quite a few death doors with that as well. Um, we'll talk about that later, but a lot of things like all throughout and then flash forward to, um, 2009 when my mom passed. Um, and, and I would, you know, everything stayed on par with the spiritual knowing and the empathic stuff, all of that. Um, I was always super fascinated with the paranormal, which is really common for mediums and stuff. Uh, FYI. <laughs> so if you're fascinated with the paranormal, right. yeah. you could be a medium. Um, right? And so I was super fascinated with all of that. Of course, I've always been a huge history buff. Um, and there's always been things in history that just resonated and rocked me to my core, which you know, now knowing all that I know, well, I've probably had a past life in that. That's probably why, right? So, um, things, I, I always notice things like that or, um, no, don't go that way. We don't want to go that way. Those kinds of things. Um, and then flash forward to, um, 2009 and my mom was really sick and, um, my sister and I were like, I, I think we need to go get her and take her to the hospital. And my sister was like, I don't know. And I was like, let's just do it. Well, it's a good thing. Um, and ended up staying a week with her that week in the hospital. Well, took her in on Sunday. She passed that Friday morning. And my sister and I were both there with her. It was very beautiful. Um, but I remember leaning over and kissing her on the cheek and saying, I love you, Mom. And at that moment, I felt... My mom would always come up and do this to me. She'd just kind of rub my shoulder. And all of a sudden, I snapped up, and I was like, 
holy shit because I can see my mom standing there but I'm I'm, I'm holding the hand of her body that's laying on the bed. Is that when it reopened for you? Yeah, and I, I looked at my sister and I was like, Whoa. oh shit. <laughs> and she goes, what? And I'm like, uh, uh, mom just touched my shoulder and she goes, I know, me too. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. I, I, and my, my brain is screaming like, are you kidding me right now right here's the interesting piece in the middle for me was we raised my kids in church right as a single mom and that's a whole nother story but um always in church people would be like monique um we come pray for this person and lay hands on them because we're charismatic which hey they didn't think i was weird when i just knew shit <laughs> it had its breaks i mean i love people anyway but you know, when you cut my hands on so and so and pray, and they'd always say you have healing hands, healing hands, and all the stuff. And I do Reiki, so hey. Um, <laughs> when I learned Reiki, it was like have a name for it. I've been doing that. Oh, that's what that is. So cool, right? Um, you know, stuff like that. And so, um, I, I and my sister went to the same church. So, but it kind of freaked me out when she's like, I know, I felt it too. And I was like, dude, dude. Um, my sister was a lot older than me growing up. And she was more like a mom to me than a sister. So I wasn't like super close to her when I was little because of the seven years age difference. So even though I would try to talk about the men on the stairs or, mm -hmm. or anything like that, she didn't get it but she was dealing with her own stuff because she's gifted too so um you know she we've talked about it since um and she's like oh my gosh i remember that and she she remembers all of course all kinds of stuff that i don't remember because she's older than me um and and you know you just you try to deal with what you can at that time right so yeah flash forward 2009 mom passed and that night um that she died i actually journeyed and it wasn't the first time i'd ever traveled um but this was really significant uh for the next leg of my healing journey and for me this is when the true healing began for me i had been to counseling i had been on my knees many blood sweat tears and prayers poured into my kids and myself and breaking genetic curses and you know all all the things um lots of research looking into you know some if i hear things a few times i know i need to research into it and so i've gone down many rabbit hill holes for years on all different kinds of things um but that night, my mom died that morning, and it was my niece's birthday. <laughs> um, my niece was disabled, and so she didn't understand. She knew that grandma wasn't here anymore, but she didn't really understand. So we not only had to start planning a funeral, we also had to plan and have a birthday party. Um, my mom died at 1.10 in the morning. We did not sleep. We did not sleep all that day. Um, cause for me, I have a lot of, you know, friends and family back East. So, you know, two hour time difference when it was, when I was able, I was getting a hold of all of them that had met my mom and stuff like that. So we didn't sleep all day, <laughs> not even a nap. So we all went to bed early. And when we did, I traveled and it was the most beautiful experience I've ever had, ever had. Um, and it was truly truly healing you know it was it was it was amazing it really was um i got to see my mom and my grandmother who i never met and um it was really empowering um i didn't realize how much so until later um but i was whisked into this beautiful golden meadow and i was kind of on this hill and it was just this beautiful meadow your mom popped in. I know my mom's here. She just stepped in. I was like, hi, mommy. Um, I know, standing on this hill in this meadow, and I can see the the grass and the natural wheat is about waist high, and it, I can see it in this beautiful, warm, 
Shinnok breeze and it's just kind of waving. And I can hear drums in the distance because I'm native, um, for those that don't know. And I can hear the drums in the distance. And so, of course, I start walking towards it. And I go down the hill and I start walking across the field. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, I feel, uh, I feel a man step in beside me and I turn and I look and he's, he's the medicine man, he's a shaman and he's in ceremonial dress and I looked at him, he didn't startle me though, I, I felt him, like I know him, like we're related, I knew that we were related um, and I asked him, are we related and he just smiled and nodded his head, all right. So he walked with me, total silence, and so we walked a little bit, and then I was getting ready to, the the area was, it was like an actual clearing, like no tall grasses, and you could see the horses, I could smell them, I could smell the campfire, um, I could see, um, I could see the tribe, the teepees, I could hear the, the music, the dancing, the singing, I could smell the food, um, and so I was about to step into closer into the clearing and he actually put his arm up and stopped me. And at that point I turned to look at him and he said no. And I was like, but I I, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Where am I? I was like, er, um, and he's like, no, you can't go any further. And I was like, what? And I was like, well, I want to see because I could see everybody dancing, but there were two women standing in the middle. And... Um, people were laughing and it was just a huge joyous celebration it was so amazing and um so it was it was really interesting because what he did is he like it's almost like a matrix moment i'm not gonna lie um it's the only way my brain can like explain it he like blew it up and kind of brought it forward so that i could see but i wasn't going to it and even then it was still kind of in the distance but i could see it more clearly and in the middle of the circle was my mother hugging another woman. And I was like, and all of a sudden they my mom turned and she looked at me and she was like, <gasps> and she was tapping the older woman and yeah. was like pointing. And I was like, that's my mom. And he was like, yes. And I was like, that's my grandmother. And he was like, yes. And I was like, Oh, and I went to go and he goes no you can't go it's not your time I was like oh then it clicked anywhere I was and so at that point my mother and my grandmother turned to me and blew me blew me kisses and and waved and they were smiling and you know saying I love you and and all the things and and then I was like oh can I just stay here for a little bit and he's like no it's time for you to go and I was like, and what was interesting is in the clearing, like the edge of the clearing, the outside edge, there were these beautiful trees that lined and I could hear the water. I could hear the water. So it was like a creek. It wasn't a huge one. It wasn't a river, but I could hear the water of the creek moving. And I felt like they were going between the trees. Like you could see trees on each side of the bank. Um, and so you could hear the water and again, I could smell the horses, the food. It was, it was an amazing experience. <laughs> the interesting thing is as I was falling into that, I was still looking at the wall in my nephew's room where I was staying because I stayed at my sister's house. Well, you were house. seeing beyond the veils. Totally. Um, and so, um, you know, he was like, no, it's not your time. And I was like, oh. so, you know, I told my mom I loved her. Um said hi grandma i'd never met her before she died when my mom was little um said hi to her told her i loved her um and um my grandmother said we'll meet again and um you know then i turned and before i got over the top of the the little hill i was back into my body um it was pretty it was pretty intense it was so beautiful and i just i remember laying there going what just happened? Holy shit, I just had an out-of-body experience. And what was really interesting, and, and by then it was like, I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And so I got, I remember getting up and going upstairs at my sister's house 
and and making coffee. I was like, I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep after that. That was incredible. And at the time, I wasn't really sure that I could share with my sister because I didn't know where she was with all of her stuff. Um, you know, Christianity as a whole. And I'm not knocking it. I, I love Jesus. I talk to him every day. Um, but that can be a kind of a dicey, dicey subject. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so I remember getting coffee and going out, sitting on her deck. She kind of lived out in the boonies. And sitting on the deck. And I was like, yeah, I definitely need a cigarette for this one. Just to process. And so... My sister had grabbed coffee and joined me. I was like, what are you doing up? She goes, I just had the weirdest experience. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, people say. you too, huh? And she, she looks at me. I said, you first. <sighs> Y'all, and I got used to trying to tell you, you cannot make this up. My sister went to the same place. However, she came in on the other side of the creek by the trees and when she was walking across the field, because she could hear the drums and the celebration, as she was walking towards, all she saw was the line of trees. And on the the side of the trees closest to her, um, there were horses and, and um, tribesmen um, on horses and standing in between. And she got to a certain point and they stopped her and said, you can't pass. You can't go any further, little sister. And she said, but I want, I feel like I need to, to see. And they were like, you can't go any further. So my sister actually came in on the other side. And said, that's something. Yeah. And that, that was the conversation that we needed to spark mm -hmm. a lot of things. Robin said she loves listening to you, Mom. What a beautiful story. Aw, thanks, Robin. Um, and I can't tell you how many guides and spirits and ancestors have stepped in because, oh. I know. So she shakes and I itch. I know. And when they get really close, I itch, too. It's, well, I shake, too, occasionally. But I'm like, and that's what it is. So yeah. if you guys get those tingles, it's like every sense is on fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your mom is sitting here going like this to me. I know. <laughs> Like, wait, wait. I know. What? Go ahead. Oh, she's sorry. Yeah. I know. She knows she said that conversation with you. Yeah. But hearing you tell the story, I don't know if she's heard you tell the story. I've never told the story. I don't think she's heard the full story. No. Like the whole thing and how you saw it as a child and what you thought about all that. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. I've never shared the story. So, I mean, not to like, oh, I don't. Sorry. I know. I know. Mama, I forgave you a long time ago. I really did. Really oh. did. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, it's it's just interesting. So that, that started sparked a whole different conversation and another level of trust with my sister, right? Um and it was interesting. <laughs> It was interesting, but then things got really interesting at my house, and my poor kids, man, my poor, poor kids. No, they were learning. Oh, they learned a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> they learned we a not whole time. Oh, well, I, I feel bad for the experience that they had to some degree, mm -hmm. because um, it's really hard to choke down when you realize that you're the one that created it. Yeah. So how that goes is, <laughs> how that goes is, mm -hmm. we'd been living in a side-by-side -side duplex. And um, when when I had went to look at a bunch of different places to rent, um, I really loved the location because it was super convenient. As a single mom, it was not far from the high school, which my daughter was in high school, and it also wasn't far from the middle school, which both my boys are in middle school, so it was super convenient. It was like 10 minutes to my work. It was centrally located in Helena. It was perfect. Had a yard. It was close to a park. I mean, you couldn't get any more perfect. It was everything that I manifested before I knew what manifesting really was. I prayed for it really hard, and I got it, right? So they gave me the keys, and I went to go look at it, and I was like, oh, something feels weird. Like, something felt weird. Something felt weird. But I was like, 
And then I just felt like, well, you'll just bless it and you'll be okay. All right. So I took the, so I took the duplex. And as I was filling out the application and giving the deposit and having that conversation with the property manager, I felt like I needed to ask, did anybody die in that apartment? What happened to the person that lived there before me? Oh, well, um, um, and I'm like, she died. And the property manager looked and I'm like, she died in the apartment, didn't she? Oh, no, no, no. She died. She died in the hospital. Lying. I looked at her and I said, I know that you're lying to me. Because I feel it. I feel it. I feel like somebody punches me in the stomach every time somebody lies to me. It makes me nauseous. And I looked at her and I said, I know that she died in the apartment. And you have to disclose that. No, I, I, she died. She died in the hospital or in route to the hospital. No, she died in my freaking apartment. <laughs> anyway, she wasn't the problem. <laughs> she was not the problem. Um, the problem was all my stuff was reawakening just like that. And it comes in waves, right? So instantly it was, Ooh. I hadn't traveled like that since I was in junior high. And that's a whole other messed up story. <laughs> we'll have to get into like creepy stories later. Yeah. Um, but... I hadn't done that for a long time. Like, I was in junior high last time I'd done that. And, um, that was, like, the first step in my reawakening, um, on a grander scale, other than, you know, being intuitive, I guess. Um, <coughs> and so, I remember laying in my, I remember laying in my bed. The kids were gone, um, I think the boys were at my sister's house and my daughter was at a friend's house, so I had the house to myself. I remember laying there in a three-bedroom apartment. The, the, the one next to us was empty because they had just moved out. And I was laying there, and we didn't have, like, super close neighbors at all. Um, and, and I was laying there going, who is talking right now? <laughs> Who's, oh, nope, nope, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. And pictures started flying off the wall, and uh, I heard voices in the kids' closets, and I was like, what is going on? My house literally went off. Um, and so I started trying to push push my stuff back down. I was like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm, I'm out. I'm not doing this. I don't want to do this. That is creepy as shit. <laughs> That's scary. I didn't want to do it. Um, so I prayed, um, I opened my Bible, and then I learned, we all learned a lot in that I had an old hutch that was my mom's, and somebody had put her ashes on top of it. Oh, no. And then when I had asked the kids to um, take these old antique mirrors that were the only thing to survive a house fire, I might add, I had asked I I had asked them to put them in out in the storage because they were they were solid oak they were too heavy for the walls I was like I, but I didn't want them to break put them out in the storage they did but the boys had stored them glass to glass with no cover and why is that important that creates portals <laughs> yeah. yeah and so what happened is the way the storage unit was versus in proximity of where the antique china hutch was and my mom's ashes triangulated. Oh. oh. Pictures would fly off the wall. And then add into junior high boys. High and their girls, emotions and what they have. Their like emotions. Yep. And then, you know, watching creepy movies and scary shit when I'd ask them not to in my house. Because it was at that point, I couldn't watch that stuff anymore. Because it really, really deeply had started to affect me for probably two years before my mom died. I couldn't watch that stuff anymore. Like, mm -hmm. it would affect me. And, and I know it was because I was still trying to push my stuff down because it was already fighting to come right. out. Um, and so... Um, you know, and I also know now it's all what you accept, allow, and receive, whatever. But 
it it would it would trigger all of those things that I went through as a kid and experienced, and it was trying to bust me open. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So I'd push it back down. So the triangulation, it was a portal, and my house got really ugly. <laughs> it got really lively. None of the kids could sleep because this is like this is like a movie. Like but it's, it's our what, life. What happened in the right? Yeah, <clears throat> it was my life. Um, and so I'm sitting there with Bible open. I have I literally went to the church because I did the books for the church because I'm an accountant. And so we had uh, frankincense, holy water, uh, frankincense oil, and all. It's all blessed, all stuff. I and my kids could totally test my sister too. Um, I had the pastor and his wife. I had all kinds of people over to help clear my house and bless my house and do all the things. And my pastor looked at me and goes, Monique, you don't need us. You can do this. And I was like, <laughs> but I really can't, though. And he's like, but you really can, though. He's super intuitive, too. He used to call me out in church all the time. People would be like, you know, oh, I'm not really sure about this or that or this or that. And I'd be sitting there and he'd be like, Monique. And I'd be like, yep. And he goes, you got anything to say about that? And I'm like, nope. And he goes, yeah, you do. And I'm like, Damn it. He was super intuitive. Right. So I would give words in church. <laughs> Psychic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what I see for you. This is what I feel. So how did you take care of that? Like, what did you do for the portals? Because at that time, you didn't have... Theta healing. You didn't I have didn't. any energy modalities. I didn't. So, so what did you do? So I so all and of guys ask questions if you absolutely. have questions. So all of that actually that actually spurred on the whole leg that I'd been on for the last five years or more. Well maybe way more than that. But <clears throat> I was seeking because I it seemed like we would clear things, it would settle down for a day, and then I would start getting more sensitive, and I'd push it down, and then things would erupt. I, I literally couldn't walk down the hall without flipping the light on because I felt the negative energy rushing at me. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. Wow. <coughs> and um, my kids didn't want to sleep in their rooms. They never wanted to open their closets. So I was like, okay, there's got to... But I felt, I, I knew that there was a reason. I just had to find it. And so I felt like I needed to go into the storage room. And as soon as I did, I was like, oh, my God. I saw the mirrors, and I went, oh, that explains a lot. So um, I was like, Jesus. So you just intuitively knew at that moment that's what was created? Absolutely. I knew that that was a big piece of it. Um, and the other piece... I, my my clear audience started to open up at that moment yeah and lisa's saying she's so interested in hearing how you handled all of this at that time oh dude i was a mess <laughs> <laughs> was it handling or was it surviving it, it was totally survival mode yeah. honestly and it it really was like living in a horror show my kids they have that really nervous <laughs> my one son wanting to talk about it he just won't um and my daughter will. She'll laugh about it. But even they're like, oh, man, that was so scary. Um, they learned a lot. We learned a lot through these things, right? We did. Um, but as soon as I opened the, the storage, and I could feel, once I actually stopped and and allowed, I allowed myself to feel, allowed. feel. I'm like, all right, what is this? I was standing I was standing on my porch, and the door to the storage was right there. And I was like, what is that? It felt heavy and gross. I'd felt that before. Um, and I opened the storage thing, and I saw the mirrors, and I was like, oh. I, I could barely catch my breath, and I could barely stand up. I ripped the mirrors apart, and instantly a lot of that stopped. It shifted. I could feel it. Um, but it was really interesting. It was almost like you could see smoke is what it looked like. Like you could see the smoke curling back into What's each What's interesting mirror. is as you're telling the story, I'm smelling sulfur. Yeah. It's the strangest thing. Absolutely. But yeah. that's what it was. You could see mm -hmm. the smoke curl back into the mirrors as it broke them apart. And I was like, oh, my oh. God. And so I'd gotten the, the holy oil, the frankincense, all the things. I cleared it, blessed it. Um, you know, made the commands in Jesus' name, and 
um, a lot of that settled down. But then I started having other things happen to me. Um, I had this reoccurring nightmare, and it legitly was a nightmare. And I couldn't seem to shake it. Every time I'd wake myself up in the middle of the, the nightmare, if I'd go back to sleep, I'd go right back into it. And and this this is where things got super interesting. So was it a nightmare or a lucid dream? Oh, just wait. Oh. Just wait. <laughs> okay. So Ooh. I I hadn't slept in three days straight. I, I felt like I was hallucinating because I was so tired. Um, and I was a mess. I was super emotional. I was, I was exhausted. Um, and I was at work one day and randomly, very intuitive, I get a phone call to my sister. She goes, are you okay? And I just burst into tears. No, I'm not ugly crying, snotting all over myself. I am not okay. She goes, what is going on? And I was like, I can't sleep. Every time I go to sleep. I see this old Victorian house, which I found online, by the way. It's in upstate New York. Just saying. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I said, um, I see this old Victorian house. I see myself walk in the door. I hear and I feel this woman and she's like, come to me. And I can't not, I can't not go up the stairs. And I go up the first flight of stairs to the second story and I hear come to me and I go around and I go up and she's standing on the landing to the attic and she's this tiny woman she's not very big she's about five foot two five foot four tops and that's probably in heels she's got an uh, uh, it's not quite Victorian dress but it's got a lot of lace to it and she's standing there she's dressed in black from head to toe and she's like, come to me, come to me. And I've got one foot on that bottom step and my hands on the rails and they're white knuckles. In fact, I used to wake up and my hands hurt from like holding them. Um, and my arms too from like holding on. And I know now that that's a psychic dream because I could feel the wood. Um, yeah. And I was holding on and she was, t I could feel her tugging me to get me to go up the stairs and I was like no but what was interesting to me oh hi Jesus um what was interesting to me <laughs> I know um is the last the last time I allowed myself to go to sleep and this is the dream I kept snapping back into um and I would feel myself pull myself out of it and as soon as I closed my eyes I was right back at the bottom of the stairs and so when I looked at her, I could see all this energy crackle around her. It looked like lightning. I could just see it everywhere. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I snapped myself out of the dream. So I hadn't slept in three days because I was like... And you're just constantly redoing this. It, it was like on a loop. Like I could not get out of it. And, and I would pray. I slept with my Bible open next to my bed. I blessed myself with holy oil and water. I could not get out of this. Um, and, and y'all, this is before I knew to call in the angels. I've, I've always believed in angels. I used to see them all day. Um, and I always knew that they were with us. But I had never once in all that thought to actually, on purpose, call them in to help me. Right? These are the things we don't know. These are, These yeah. are things we need to know. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... Diana, my sister, called me. She goes, are you okay? No. And I just had a total meltdown in my car. Just ugly crying, snotting all over. And she goes, you need to call this number. What? She goes, you need to call this number. Get off the phone. Call this number. Tell her you're my sister. And you need to get in and see her. I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, don't argue. Just do it. And my sister's not like that that way. And so I was like, the hell? So I got my composure as best I could, dialed the number, called this woman, and I said, I'm Diana's sister, I'm having a hard time, and she goes, she goes, yes, spirit tells me you need to come now. And I went, um, I was still at work. <laughs> and she goes, spirit says you need to come now. And I was like, uh, I, I just started sobbing. I was like, okay, and she goes, call in your angels and I went what that's when it clicked she goes pray to Jesus pray to God call in your angels here's here's my address for my office 
Um, I'll see you in a few minutes. I I worked up on one end of Helena. She was like central. She's actually she used to be down the road from you, actually where you're at now. So <laughs> about ten minutes, you know, or so <clears throat> with lights, whatever. And so um I was like, okay, so I went in, told my boss, hey, I gotta go. She goes, are you okay? Nope, I'll tell you tomorrow. She was really cool. Grabbed my purse and stuff, and I was out the door. And I started praying. <laughs> and I drove to her office. And I was nervous. I don't know what the hell she did. I don't know why I was going to see her. I had no clue right. other than I had to see this woman. And so I go in. I pull up in front of her office. I open the door. She turns around. She's this tiny little thing older woman she looks at me and she goes wow you pack a punch the hell does that mean she goes i felt you coming here like i felt you coming she goes dang she goes girl you pack a punch i'm like i don't even know what that means um and i was exhausted and um she goes let's go into my office because she was an artist so her outer office was her art studio she was beautifully talented. Oh my gosh, amazing! You bring her picture, she would paint it. Amazing. She's since passed. Um, but then she goes, "Let's go into my other office," and I was like, "What?" So she opened up, and then that was the back room. She did like Reiki and massage, and different. She a lot of different modalities that she did. Um, and so she's like have a seat and I was like then I got really nervous because I'm like what the hell am I doing here and she um she was Cherokee like we are so that was really cool and um I had been seeking for a while um just trying to figure out like trying to find like okay what do I do with this like what do I do with this like I, I didn't even know really what was going on I needed some kind of sense of direction or um, some way to like outlet some of this energy that just kept like rolling up in a big ball within me and so um, <laughs> she helped me with the woman um, because I told her about it she goes first and foremost you haven't been sleeping no ma'am I have not and so I told her again and she 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 was like hold on let me connect she connected and she was sitting there and she'd already smudged me and did all the things which i was like this shit is this because you had no you didn't know no you were clue. not raised to understand those ways or the different no, energy no i had right. no idea i i wasn't raised with my heritage because um so you didn't know what smudging was i you had no know. idea uh -huh. um my mom had always been super fascinated with our um, Cherokee heritage but um, it was looked down upon by her family because that was not something to be proud of at that time um, my mom was from the south and so um, you know I wasn't raised with with that heritage I've always been fascinated by it though um, but I was just like oh okay um, and so she goes <laughs> She goes, you want to know the fastest way to get rid of that that woman? And I said, yeah, she scares the ever-loving shit out of me, is what I told her. And she looked at me, and she laughed at me, and she goes, stop giving her your power. What the hell does that even mean? I, what does that mean? She goes, stop giving her your power, Monique. I don't know who she is. How would I give her anything? I don't, I don't even know. She goes, all that energy you see crackling around her? I said, yeah. She goes, that's yours. Take it back. And I went... And how, for the love of God, do I do that? Mm -hmm. And how, for the love of God, did she find me? And it was a psychic attack. This woman was, was draining me. That was part of the exhaustion that I'd been dealing with. But it had finally come into focus, because everything was opening up, that I could actually see her instead of just waking up exhausted, feeling like I just closed my eyes and the alarm just went off and I hadn't slept at all because she was draining me all throughout the night. Mm -hmm. So this had been going on for a while, but it had finally come into my clarity so that I could see her, recognize it, and deal with it. So she helped me break that um, psychic attachment, and I never had a problem with that ever since. But, um, and then she, I was like, well, I I, well, <laughs> I have, <laughs> I, I have too, just not like, like that. that. Now so I know how to deal with it. Lisa wants to know how through all of that you were able to hold faith. 
Right? That's the big thing is. Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, and and I'm skipping over a lot of stuff, y'all. I'm serious. I, I you know, and I did too because absolutely. It's, we could sit here for, for, for hours. hours. Absolutely. Um, so for me, just like you guys could too, if you shared your story. Absolutely. For me, it was through all of it. I mean, I'm I'm human, so you always have that startle factor. Like, and even now done paranormal investigations and I'm like ooh hey <laughs> you know I get startled um, through all of that I always felt safe and protected I can't explain that other than I knew that I was um, you didn't know how I didn't know how and I didn't know why I, I absolutely didn't know why um, but I knew that I was uh, and the only thing I can I that comes to mind is from the time I was little, my, my mom would take us to church sporadically. She was by no means, like, a devout anything. Um, but all all the years of going to church, um, people would be like, wow, God's hand is really on you. And I'm like, okay, I had no idea what that meant. Um, and I'm not trying to convert anybody to Christianity that's not, that's not what this is about. Um, but... Uh, they would always say, you know, God's really got his hand upon you. And there was a lot of things when I was in the womb. Um, and they're always like, well, the enemy tries to stop her from being born. And I'm like, well, <laughs> have I got some stories about that? <laughs> right? And so, um, you know, that that's just kind of been the underlying story of my life. Of, right. You know, but I always knew. I mean, I always, and I've been through some shit, y'all. Like, I've been through some shit. Um, and I've always come out of it. I've, I've always come out of it. Um, I mean, shit, I rode my car six times on the driver's side and came out with a tiny scratch. They were expecting major hedge. I'm 6'2". Um, I was in a small, compact car. Um, they expected blood, gore, and ew everywhere. I had a tiny scratch on my foot. So how did you um, step into the healing work that you do now? How did you get from there? Oh, man. To, so to here right well so i've i've always been a, a research history buff too right and so curious about stuff um come to find out this woman was a, a shaman but she was a medium as well um it was interesting she was an older gal and i was sitting there thinking in my mind ooh, maybe she'll mentor me because she she also helped me with the house she's like well i could come do it but you can do it Ugh, I'm tired of people telling me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, but that's not a helpful statement to somebody who's learning. No, it's not. And mm -hmm. I had I'm still like it's true, but it's not helpful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And why don't you come show me? Then I know mm -hmm. how, right? Um, but anyway, so and she helped me with a few other things. And so in my mind, I kid you not, you guys, in my head, I was like, ooh, maybe she'll mentor me, because that's what I was looking Switching for was somebody mm -hmm. to sh to guide me to mentor me to do all the things and I kid you not and I said it in my head my lips never moved and she whipped around in her chair and she goes oh I could totally mentor you and I looked at her because that kind of creeped me out I ain't gonna lie <laughs> I was like the hell she goes oh I could totally mentor you but I'm not going to I remember looking at her like are you kidding me right now did you see the hot mess I was when I walked in the door and I looked at her and I went, she goes, I could, but you just hand me your pocketbook and be done. And I was like, I don't know what that means, is what I told her. And she goes, well, you're stronger than I am. I said, again, I don't even know what that means. I, I don't. And so that started my quest to, to learn and to grow because I left her office. I felt confident about a few things that she helped me with, but I had a whole lot more answers or questions than I had answers for and that she was willing to give. Um, and I paid for my session in full um, and I had no problems doing that. But I left, I, I kept my shit together until I got in my car and I cried all the way home because I was so frustrated. Um, I had no sense of direction. I had no idea what I was doing. I felt like I had just been yeeted out of the boat going 80 miles an hour with nowhere to go but just gonna flop all over the place that's what it felt like and so there um 
you know, of course my sister was like, call me back. And I told her and she's like, oh, wow. And so I'm like, how do you know this woman? Which then really opened up that conversation Mm -hmm. for her journey up to that point as well. And I was like, that (laughs) makes sense. So that led us to another light worker um, outside of Missoula. And I, that was a whole happenstance, but I ended up going with. And then as we pulled up, they, they walked up and I was just going to hang out. And, um, as I rounded the corner, she was like, oh my God, you're here. I'm like, "Ah, what do I know? Do I know you? She goes, no, but they told me you're coming. I'm so excited to hear. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. And so I ended up having a session with her, which was another complete and total disappointment. Um, because I left with no answers, no help, no direction, nothing but unanswered questions. And, um, at that point I was like, this is bullshit. You guys, this is at that point I had reconnected with my dad. Um, he'd always been around. I could always feel him, but I was building that relationship with my dad, um, spiritually. Um, my mom was severely avoiding me at that point because she was going through her own healing journey on the other side. Um, I was really struggling to find any sense of direction. Um, I was doing a lot of research. People would call me out of the blue. Hey, can you come clear my house? (laughs) Sure, I'll try. (laughs) So, So the universe was putting me in situations so that I would learn. I made some mistakes. Um, and I just kind of muddled through, to be honest, a lot of research. I listened to a lot of experts. I read a ton of books. Um, spent a lot of time in the library looking up shit and doing whatever, a lot of time online. And then, um, Diana started her hands journey with Sarah. And that was like the next, like up until that point, I had learned a lot already. Um, just by trial and error. Um, listening to people, um, connecting with people that were kind of woo-woo. And I always listened to my gut about, that sounds right, that's not, maybe some of that, but not all of it, that kind of thing. And then we started our Theta journey, and it gave me that sense of direction, and it gave me something to do with it. And even then, I was like, yeah, I'm intuitive, but I'd always been the water water, um, Cooler. cooler healer at work. Everybody would come to me with their shit, right? And then one day, I think it was you, me, and Diana were working on something. We were doing a dig or something. And I'm like, well, can't you see that? You're like, what do you mean you see that? I'm like, I see it clearly. Like, you're over here, and this is this, and that is that, and this is this, and that's that. You're like, that's exactly what I'm seeing. And I was like, okay, well, I'm seeing it too. And you're like, Monique. And I was like, what? And you're like, you're a medium. And I was like, what? (laughs) Shut up. I am not. How did you not know that, right? Um, just as a, so Lisa's saying she's having buffering issues. You know, Lisa, I've been checking I'm having no buffering on her phone or on my phone. So is anybody else having buffering if, issues? Because we're not seeing it on our end. No. Darla is. Mine too. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, because it's not on our phone. There's no buffering on the phones. I, it could just be all the energy too. Could be. Oh, let's clear some of that. That's what I was just, yep. Yep, okay, creator of all that is. Please clear all the additional energy, clearing the space, allowing for clear communication and trance, trance flow of information, dissemination of information. Thank you. It is done, this done, this done. Show me. Oh, there you go. It was almost like static electricity. It was really interesting. Oh, yeah. You can feel the buildup. Okay. But I'm not seeing it on either of our phones, and my computer is hooked to it. It, It's just interesting. So let's hope that fixes it. Right. Okay. But anyway, so that, that really launched, like, that next leg of the journey. Um, learning Theta really gave me... Yeah, thank uh, you, Lisa. A sense of direction and a, a purpose like what do we do with this and and that was my question up until then and I had met you before that mm-hmm. um, yeah, as I you told last time I, I guinea pigged guinea pigged <laughs> me, me channeling information to you 
<laughs> Mama coming out. Who came out this week, by the way. Oh. She finally came out again. Woo woo. <laughs> woo woo. Okay. Um, but it was like, um, you know, I was like, so what do I do with this? Like, okay, okay, I can do this, and I can do that, and I can do this, and I have all this stuff. What the hell do you do with it? Like, what do you do with it? Um, and so I, I always knew that I needed, and it wasn't not out of obligation, but I needed to help people. Like, I wanted to help people. And I had this extreme push and want and desire to help people. But how do you do that? Like, what do you do with that, <laughs> right? Um, I'm an accountant. I ain't helping a whole lot of people. I do work for DPHHS. Mm -hmm. I help people from behind the scenes. But I knew that that was not my life purpose. These guys going through hands helped give me information. I, I, can't, I was there getting You point. took an intensive, too, though. I did do the intensive. So in hand I was analysis, triggered the whole just, weekend. <laughs> in hand analysis, the first week, you, the, you start with an intensive, where you just learn your fingerprints. It's a weekend-long experience. It was in intense. They are right. not lying. Wow. Right. And it's really critical. That's what I said. I went through that, and I said, ooh, I have to do this for other people. So I took another one, and then went on the year-long yeah. path. But, yeah. Woo. Yeah. So, yeah. So but you I, took that. I so did, you have a foundation. I, of, I did, but right? I did that after, way after the Theta and Reiki. You're right. I forgot about right? that. So we okay. did we did Theta, and that was just an amazing experience. That was like... And we did it together. Oh, we did. Um, her, me, and my sister, and a few other friends, and... Um, Man, I I I felt like I I mean I felt pretty solid in what gifts and abilities I had up until that point. So th oh okay really okay okay so <clears throat> our, our brain gets in the way sometimes, and so I I felt fairly confident with my intuitive abilities, and I know that probably sounds stupid to some people. But I'm human, and that's where the brain goes, right? And so we get into our basic class, and we're all sitting in there, and I'm looking around the room going, why am I here? I don't belong here. Oh. What the hell am I doing here? Like, I had a, almost a full-blown panic attack. I'm looking at our instructor, who's super psychic. I'm looking at my sister, who's so freaking intuitive. Sarah, who's freaking incredible, and all the other people. I didn't know it at that time, though. I know, but I did. And all. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, and all the other w ladies in the room, and I'm like, I don't I don't belong here. I, I don't belong here. And I started getting really fidgety. And our instructor, because she's been doing this a long time, she goes, Do we need a break? Mm hmm. And I got up and I went to the bathroom. And I went into the bathroom and I just sobbed. I started crying and I was like, I don't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. There's no way. Because when they went to the fair and got and met this instructor and had gotten the book, um, I had read part of most of the book before we had went to you class. You did more than I did. <laughs> I never read the book before I went to class. I didn't know what it was when I went. I, re I got through over half the book. <laughs> but what I found was I kept trying to do it, and I, could, I, I didn't feel like... That happens all the time. Right. People I felt say like that. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so I was nervous because I'm like, ah, they're going to kick me out because I can't fucking do this. They're, they're, they're not, I'm, in a total, I'm a total fraud. There's, there's, I, I can't do this, right? And so I went in the bathroom and had a total meltdown. <laughs> I know, it's kind of silly, but it, it, I did. I had a total meltdown in the bathroom of, I can't do this. Oh my, I, I can't, what if they make us do this individually? She's totally going to know that I can't do this. She already knows I don't belong here. I totally psyched myself out in the worst way. And so I'm sitting there in the bathroom, snotting all over Aww. myself. My face is getting red and puffy. And so I'm freaking out about that because I'm like, well, most people won't know, but my sister will definitely know. <laughs> and she's sitting right next to me. I'm like, we're in the front of the room, and I'm I'm six two. I can't hide. And so I'm like, oh, this is this is bad. This is really bad. Oh my god. And at that moment, my dad stepped in, large and in charge. Of my dad was six two. He was not a small man at all. He stepped in that bathroom, large and in charge, and was like, listen here. <laughs> You are exactly where you need to be. Get your stuff together. Slash some water on your face. Dry up. 
and get yourself back out there because they're waiting on you because you're going to take this class and you're exactly where you need to be. <laughs> okay, okay. And so I did, and I walked back in the class, and my stomach's like, Ugh. and my sister goes, I sit down, and she goes, are you okay? And I'm like, uh-huh. She goes, a liar. She's my sister. So then... Our instructor takes us up through the meditation, and that's what was freaking me out because I, I kept trying to do it, and I couldn't do it on my own. And so she takes us through the meditation, and she goes, she looks straight at me, and she goes, everybody made it. And I went, what? <laughs> she goes, everybody made it. And I went, even me? And she goes, I remember that. <laughs> I was totally freaked out. I'm like, and I looked at you like, of course you did. <laughs> I, and I hadn't said a word the whole I time we walked know, in. I was sitting there the whole time, like, I'm not even intuitive. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to be able to see or do anything. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> the stuff we do to ourselves. But I, I, I remember going, even me? And she, she's she turned out to laugh, but she goes, yes, Monique, even yeah. you. And I went, yes. Right, and after that, I was totally fine. But I was so freaked out. I'm like, she's going to know I can't do it. Um, that was... That class, though, that whole week, because we did basic and then advanced. It was amazing. That busted me open. Me too. In ways that I never knew was even possible, honestly. Um, well, because we did it together, though, we also had the experience that we um, stayed five at the of same us. place. And it wasn't a motel. It was a, a Airbnb. Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were like... It was almost like a mystery school. It was like it was. an immersion into intuitive opening. And then, and it wasn't like we had never, we're, we're always intuitive. You're born intuitive. So Absolutely. it was like this deep dive into, oh my gosh. Well, and the beauty of it is, is we had two very seasoned, had been open for a long time people with us that stayed with us three. That's right. And we they did. were able to really help us in mm -hmm. areas where I was like, uh, and they're like, you're fine, you're safe. And I was like, oh. And at that time, too, I was still wrestling with the whole Christianity and stepping into my spiritual gifts. And um, and, and, I, and I believe, you know, Jesus says, you can do all that I can do plus more, right? Um, and talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I relied heavily on that. And then, of course, when he started stepping in, I was like, yeah, but, oh, you're, oh, you're Jesus. Like, I, uh. Right. Well, and Darby <laughs> says, this story is so me. You helped me go forward in my journey when you shared this with me. So blessed to have found you. Aww. And Lisa said she was going to ask if your peeps get really in your face when one gets that way. When one what? When one gets that way, doubtful. Yeah, but it, it, I mean, I, yeah, they do, but it's all in love. Like, my dad, my dad will step in because he's still human, right? Um, <laughs> the other ones will step in. Now, I work a lot with, uh, not to freak anybody out, one of my main guides is actually an angel of death. His name is Azrael, not as depicted. Who came to me when I crossed over. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what he... Well, there's 26 different angels of death, but right. um, Azrael... Mm -hmm, and that's what they do. Well, I don't know if I crossed over, but I went to the other yes, side. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what they do is they, they help... Um, whisk you out of your physical He's form. He's the most beautiful energy. Oh. And He's amazing. He is. He's amazing. He is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know what she's thinking. <laughs> Anyways. Eye candy does not begin to describe. I'm just going to park that right there. I'm like, that's not okay. <laughs> but they don't always get in our face when no. we're doubtful. Because sometimes, energetically, you put your hand out. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And... And for me, when when they're when they come at me a little bit like that, it's because I won't get off the gerbil wheel of. <laughs> we just talked about this last night about how <laughs> we fight within ourselves, but we always oh. win. <laughs> One way or the other, we're gonna win, whether it's a long journey or short. <clears throat> so they they kind of jump at me a little bit, and it's always in love, and it's always with direction and correction, um, because they come at me when I'm like. But can I do that? Should I do that? 
do I have to do that? Because I'm one, <laughs> I do push back a little bit. They they kept jumping at me to do Reiki. Here's a prime example. After Theta, and it was an amazing experience, I learned a lot. I got a lot confirmed for me, and I opened up even more. Um, it wasn't... It wasn't long after Sarah took Reiki and she goes, Mommy, you've totally got to take Reiki. Excuse me. And what what she didn't know is that even before we went to Theta, I kept hearing about Reiki. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I looked it up because that's what I do. Um, and some people at work had been talking. Every time I turned out, it was Reiki, 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 Reiki. I'm like, this is uh, ridiculous. And so... Um, Sarah took it. She goes, Monique, you've got to take Reiki. And I was like, <laughs> funny you should mention that. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll look into it. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not doing that. I'm still trying to learn Theta. Um, <laughs> right? And then I saw huge growth with her. That's not why I did it. But um, it was it was a very beautiful transition. And I saw that growth mm -hmm. within yourself and the, the next level of healing and expansion. It was really beautiful. And so my peeps were like, you're taking Reiki. I'm like, I'm not taking Reiki. They're like, but you are. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm really not. And so they kept pushing on me. They're like, oh, that'd be a lot easier to do if you don't, you know, knew Reiki. And I'm, I'm not taking Reiki. So then one day I said, so Sarah, who did you take Reiki from? Mm -hmm. And so I signed up and I took Reiki. <laughs> I pushed back, but I, I always do what I'm told. So, um, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying um, hard here, guys. I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, just fight it a little bit sometimes. I do, I do push back, but I, I don't know. It was like, for me, I, I felt like I was still trying to grasp a lot of the theta stuff because I had really kind of felt like those old Reach toothbrush commercials where we'd got the flip top head, they popped us open, crammed it all in, and shut it, and said, "Have a great life." Yeah, but at the end of that week of training, I know my, like, I think you had a headache too, but I remember my head literally felt like an egg, and I could feel, well, I was so it was, Yeah, mine felt like a open. dinner plate that was like, Whoa. Yes, it was wild. And my third eye was like, it had its own heartbeat um, and pulse. And what was interesting was when we, we got to practice doing... Um, the angel readings. I, you, and I were paired up together for that. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting, and and I remember because um, we were sitting there, and I was like, and we were like, yeah, let's do it. And so we'd sat, you know, everybody kind of paired up, and we're all around the room, and we were sitting there, and I was so excited. I couldn't tell you why, but I was so excited, but I was scared at the same time. That's how and, it is. And it was mm -hmm. a different level of scared, like. Um, not in a bad way, but like I, I was so scared and nervous about doing it wrong or saying it wrong that I froze. I completely locked up and froze to the point where Sarah had given me a beautiful reading and I was sitting there. I don't remember that. <laughs> I remember being really nervous. She did. And I was still trying to process that because I'm a processor. And so um, I was still trying to absorb all the information and I remember sitting there and I was looking and then all of a sudden it was like everything came into focus. I like let my eyes go out of focus and then brought them back into focus and I was like, um, there's an angel standing there. <laughs> like legit. <laughs> there's a legit angel standing there. And I was like, Oh, and what was interesting is I could feel him more than I could see him. But this is this right here was a critical turning point for me. I had shut that clairvoyance down so hard it was like the jaws of life couldn't pry that shit open. <laughs> That's probably part of your anxiety when you stepped into it because you were Abs going to see. Absolutely. Although we all see different, so you didn't we, have to see that right. Way, but we do. Uh -huh. We do all see differently. Um, but all that fear from when I was little and seeing what I saw, that that all flooded back in. And I was like, I wanted to hurl my guts out, to be honest. And so I, I froze. Even though I could see it was angelic, I completely froze. Although I could feel him more than I could see him. And this this was critical. And I 
I have always firmly believed all things for a reason in this season, and it's all in that divine timing. And who I'm saying it to, it is all about that divine timing. I would not have. I don't feel as though I would have gotten the guidance that I needed at that exact moment, except for with the instructor that we had. Truly, she really she, guided us. She <laughs> did. She came over. She kneeled down. Sarah and I were facing each other on chairs. She kneeled down right next to me. And I just wanted to puke, and she was like, I think you got this. And I was like, I can't do this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And she goes, but you can do this. And I'm like, but I don't see him. I feel him. And she started laughing. She goes, well, what do you feel? What do you feel? And I said, well, I feel this, and 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 I feel this. She starts laughing, and she goes, well, what's his name? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she goes, well, ask. And I was like, mm, I didn't want to be wrong. That was, and that's that's a huge, real fear for everybody when they're first stepping out like that. It's one thing to tell your friends or coworkers, whatever, or stranger, but I was like, mm. I was thinking, uh, so what's going to happen to me if I say the wrong angel? I mean, is what? You get kind of karma comes back on that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so she's like, well, what's the first thing that pops in your head? And what was Archangel Michael? He was standing there. And and I looked at her, and she goes, uh-huh. And I was like, oh. and then the message flowed. I needed that confirmation and validation that I was truly getting the information, even though I could see him. But I could feel him far stronger than I could see him. I could see a silhouette. And so when I told her that, our instructor, she looked at me and she goes, and? And I'm like, but I'm not seeing him. And she goes, Monique, you are seeing him. You're seeing him energetically. You are feeling him. You're still seeing who is there in a different way. You're just seeing it through your third eye, not with your eyeballs. You're seeing him. You're feeling him. She goes, a lot of people can't push into the energy like that and see it that clearly. They can feel. They can mm -hmm. feel it might be tall or whatever. She goes, but you described him perfectly. You are seeing him. And I went, oh, oh, oh. All right. <laughs> I can't see. Look at me go. <laughs> it was a great reading. It was. Aw, it was it, a great reading. But it was a. It was another pivot for me. That was another pivotal moment for me. <clears throat> to like sum up everything. I mean, I would sit in church and, you know, go to ladies groups, whatever, ladies retreats, all the things, and we'd be sitting there talking, and I'd look up and I'd see feathers drop out, and they'd hit my hand and then disappear. I mean, I'd seen people get you just didn't know what to do with it yeah i'm like what do you do with that <laughs> you know right so here's a question that mm -hmm. i've been hearing mm -hmm. you know what do you think from the perspective of an adult looking back at the child self and how intuitive you were what do you think children nowadays and you too needed for you not to be in that fear place love encouragement and support truly um i i so in all of this stuff and going to people that really could have helped me i won't say should because they weren't obligated to um but going to all the people along along the way that really could have helped me but chose not to for whatever reason no judgment here that that steered me in in a lot of different directions one one being if if i can help it i don't ever want somebody to feel that way because there's no reason to and that's part of why i mentor and along with that i have mentored kids some mm -hmm. very very gifted ones and i've told you know their family um you know between 7 and 10 generally it can be earlier it can be later it just depends typically between 7 and 10 are when kids decide to keep it or shut it down 
if they shut it down, generally a traumatic event or later in life they'll reawaken and that we're seeing that in droves right now um but if they have the love and support and encouragement of their family they'll keep their gifts and i would much rather have somebody learn how to function within them positively at a young age and be able to build and grow with that as they as they move forward yeah. instead of the hard cold and we're done <laughs> but not really because those shut down but the others bloomed right and so it, it was a struggle all through life um i was always the weird kid like i i never fit in i never felt like i fit in i was also was a huge too. i mm-hmm. was also a huge jock i still have school records in boulder montana where i went to high school I, I was a huge jock. I didn't hang out with the jocks. Couldn't stand most of them. They're, oh, the energy off of those guys? No, thank you. Um, I was a good kid. I wasn't out partying and doing stupid shit like they were. I didn't start doing that until my senior year. Um, and even then, I, I think twice maybe. You know, I, it just wasn't my thing. I was old before I was old. And, and I started babysitting at like eight years old because there was like, you're still mature. I was eight. <laughs> babysitting and the dad was the high school principal <laughs> you know what i mean times different, different times wait different th- times. that was in the 80s just saying um <laughs> but um you know i i was i had never fit in and so i had the other issue of most of my friends were older than me and um i remember having like almost a total meltdown at like 13 or 14 because um, my sister and I got at it. She was pregnant. Nobody ever wins with that. <laughs> Just saying. And of course, I had teenage hormones and what trying to figure out where I fit in, which felt like nowhere. Small town, Montana. Just all the things like piling. And we just moved back to Montana again. And um, it was just a lot of stuff going on. But with that, coming with the hormones, everything accentuated. So everything, like, vibed up a little bit. It was brutal. (laughs) It was brutal. Um, And the other part is, being super empathic as a kid was a harsh reality in and of itself. Um, I could walk into a room and I knew that the kids just didn't like me. Yeah. That's the same thing. Yeah, they didn't like me. And... Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'd be like, oh, go play. Uh, Yeah, no, I'll just sit over here and read a book because... um, And so I did a lot of reading and I had a lot of imagination. Of course, parents kicked us out, too, and said, go play. You know, we didn't have computers and all the stuff to sit in front of. And I read a lot because I could escape. I could escape into a book. And, um, you know, I could imagine it far greater than anything they could have put on TV at that time. And... Um, that that's how I survived. I would get lost in books. So Thank doing you. research was like my jam. Um, I totally could have been a librarian. And mm-hmm. and that also I know that's funny. I didn't know that about you, and I was the same way. Mm-hmm. Like because I moved so much, I didn't have. I would have friends, Oops. but then we move. And, and absolutely, so, me too. And I would only have one or two. And the library was like my. It was my thing. It was my escape. It was my covering. It was my cave. It was my safe space. And I was a latchkey kid, like legitly a latchkey kid, especially when um, my sister left. I was like 11 or 12 when Diana moved and, you know, moved out of state. Um, And so then I was, I was by myself a lot. And so I'm what you would call an extroverted introvert. I've learned how to be an extrovert. Um, after I I graduated high school at 17, I went in the military. (sighs) I'm telling you, I've been through some shit, (laughs) y'all. Um, but, and my first, uh, after boot camp in Orlando in the summer, oh, that was a whole nother world. Um, my first duty station was Washington, D.C. I'm telling you, I'm, yeah. So, I, I had to learn to, to like, get outside of myself and so I made myself say hi to somebody I didn't know every single day it wasn't really hard I knew nobody and it was brutal <laughs> I remember going up to somebody hi and like almost running down the hallway right. 
but that's how I had I had to I had to step out of that I knew it I knew my survival depended on it um, and I also knew that I was gonna miss out on opportunities because I was so afraid of what was coming out of my own mouth that I wasn't stopping to think about how it made that person feel mm -hmm. I'm like that is the s most selfish thing you can do when you're so worried about yourself about saying something stupid, about doing something stupid. I've always been very expressive. Right. Um, my thing is this. Most people won't even remember what you said, but they'll remember if you're nice. Yeah. And so that's what got me through that. Hmm. So we have a couple questions okay. for you. First... Lisa validated, she said, you know, it's so important, you know, going through psychic attacks, understanding what to do for that. Mm -hmm. What is your recommendation, with her saying that, what is your recommendation for somebody who doesn't have modalities, who doesn't <coughs> know how to do, what is, what is the one <coughs> thing that you can say to them to help them with psychic attacks? Man, and, then I have another, on that one. and then I have another follow-up for that. Okay. So... In the beginning, because I didn't have modalities when, when I was having all of that stuff. Um, Leah, the woman that I had went to, did. Uh, she didn't really tell me what they were. I knew she was uh, shamanic because I could feel it. Every time she'd get close to me, I could hear the drums um, and, and all of that. Um, for me, she... Okay, back up. Thank you. For me, she had me... And again, this is where our creativity and imagination um, comes into play. Um, she had me, she goes, I want you to recall. She goes, you're in a safe space. Um, and I, her office felt good. Like, it was like it's walking clear. in off the street and you walk mm -hmm. in and you're like, oh. Safe. It was total safe. safe space. Yep, totally It clear. was completely cleared. Um, and it felt amazing. Like, I actually felt like I could sleep in there. Like, it was so comfortable. Um, and so, she goes, you're in a safe space. Um, she will be unable to see, hear, or feel you. Because she was holding space for me, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, she goes, I want you to envision her standing in, fr in front of you again. Like, her up on the, the landing you on the step and so I, I could feel my anxiety and she goes Monique I've got you I'm not gonna let anything happen to you and I was like okay and I I could feel like all the peeps were there too I could feel that um and so I did and she's like <laughs> Monique let go of the chair because I was like white knuckles <laughs> I was I couldn't help it but, and where I was at, that was the banner stir, right? And she's like, you're safe. And so I, I relax. She goes, now, I want you to relax and open your senses, which I did. And she goes, and now I want you to see the space between you and this woman. She goes, but look past the stairs and the tread and the railing and the stain and all of that. And just zero in on that space between you and this woman. What do you see? What do you feel? And I was like, there's a cord there. And she goes, yes. Where is that cord? I said, well, it's coming in right here, which is your solar plexus, right? That's your power center. She goes, okay. She goes, cut the cord. What? She goes, cut the cord and take back your power. Mm -hmm. And so... I remember looking at her and she goes, close your eyes. Because <laughs> I was like, say what? This was all new to me, right? And you don't know that you have the power to do that. Bingo. Until someone or somehow you. you find out that all of this is about you have the power of your own energy. Absolutely. No one can take it. Absolutely. So you just have to know it. Right. And mm. so I envisioned, <laughs> I know it sounds really stupid. I envisioned a big old pair of scissors. Yes, I did. And I cut the cord. And then it was like another matrix moment. Like everything was kind of suspended. The the core pieces weren't touching, but it was like everything was suspended. She goes, now take back your power. And I said, I don't know how. And she goes, yes, you do. And I was like, well, how do I do that? And she goes, what do you, how do you think? And I was like, in the name of Jesus, I command my power back. 
I know they're all like, no! yes. Um, oh, and I just go oh, ahead. I won't tell you what I saw. Keep going. <laughs> Whoa! But I was like, in the name of Jesus, I command my power back. And she goes, let's clear that. Let's clear that. Let, and so she taught me, send it to God's light to clear it and clean it and then bring it back into myself. And as soon as that did, I felt it snap into place. My, it, it, you know, you see those funny pictures where they're all frizzed out with all the static electricity. That's how my whole body was. Even my hair was kind of like crackling. I crackled. Um, and I felt it snap in and I was like, oh, wow. And she's like, that's all yours. It's always been yours. And I was like, woo. And of course, I heard that woman screaming. <laughs> I was, I opened my eye, like, she knows now. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, You're safe. She can't get to you. Um, and so at that point, too, um, she also was like, like I'd said before, as I was going to driving to see her, she said, Call in your people. I got people. I got people. I got people. I didn't know I had people. Who are my people? <laughs> Who are my people? She was calling your angels. And I was like, I don't know who they are. She goes, but you do though. And I'm like, <laughs> but I really don't. And she goes, well, girl, they know who you are. And I'm like, well, that's nice. Um, huh. And, and she kept looking really close to me. And I know that it was Azrael because he's always been with me. Um, and she just, I, I think he made her a little bit nervous, although she she was a medium as well. Um, but the interesting thing that I learned out much later is not all mediums are called to cross people over. They'll do it, but that's not one of their main main jobs, if you will. Um, it is one of mine because it brings healing to everybody on the planet. But not everybody agreed to that. Excuse me, and they don't have to. We're all here for our own purpose. Um, and so I think he made her a little bit nervous. He yeah, I did. <laughs> um, but um, she's like, your, your people are here. And so she really helped me. And she was a Christian, too. So she's like, call on Jesus. I said, I call on Jesus and the Holy Spirit all the time. She goes, I know. So you're already doing it. Mm -hmm. So, again, it was just another layer of confirmation. But it's about empowering yourself. And... And knowing when you call on them, they're there for you. They are there. So you can listen to those messages, even if you don't hear them. Absolutely. You can feel them. You can you can be in reception to them because they are bringing that to you. Absolutely. And just know, it, it, it's really about having that faith and trust and just knowing that when you make the command, and I'm not talking about in Jesus' name. No, it's in Jesus' name, I command you. Take your authority because it's about speaking that truth and yes. speaking it into truth and speaking the light is what it is. And so it's about taking the command, giving the command, commanding it in Jesus' name. It is a legit thing. Um, <clears throat> and taking back what's yours and knowing, having faith and trust and knowing as soon as you say it, it's done. It is done. Like it is done. Yeah. <coughs> so the other question, um, and then I'm looking at the time, we probably should start yeah. wrapping it up. So, yeah. um, was how do we support our kiddos when they're empathic and don't fit into school and bullying comes their way? What, uh, how would you recommend supporting them? So, for me, it was finding an outlet for the energy, um, honestly. And, there are so many gifted people right now and so many gifted kids actually it's it's like it's opening it, it's totally opening when i was a kid i was born in 1973 you know i'm old okay but i was born in 1973 it it was hush hush back then i mean this woman like came to our house and was like all hush hush about it you know it it wasn't out in the open and free like it is now you know what i mean about being gifted and I mean shit they got shows about psychic kids now um so for me my suggestion and what I've done with the kids that I've mentored is I've showed them how to step into their 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 authority and their gifts mm -hmm. I've taught them how to clear 
I've taught them how to bless things. Um, because anytime you, you remove, you need to fill it. So you're clearing and blessing at the same time. So I've taught them that I've empowered them with that. Take that fear away. <laughs> Could you not, um, one of my, somebody I know, their, their little granddaughter, she's five, she was five. She, very clairvoyant, she was getting really scared. And so I, I looked at them and said, teach her how to cast it out and clear it. What? She can do it? She just has to know she can do it. Bought her, gave her a Himalayan salt lamp. Here you go. Turn this on at night, which helps clear the negative energy. Mm -hmm. And let it roll. Um, and so that's so five years old. She goes to her grandparents' house. And they'd had, you know, because they're, they're drawn to us like a moth to the flame. The waywards and, and that kind of stuff. Because they see our light. And so... <laughs> There was one upstairs, and so one of the kids was freaking out because they'd just seen this this little kid run across the hall or whatever. And so this little girl goes, "No, no, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it." So she goes, <laughs> <laughs> "That is hysterical! I can see that." She marches her little five year old self up the stairs, and she she calls it out. And so um, it's really about um, empowering them to know that they do have the authority to, to do that and empowering them. It's also super important and critical um, that they do have those social skills as well because we need those. I mean, let's be honest. So for me, it was sports. I was in sports. It, it was a really great outlet for me to to release the energy because if not electronics fail light bulbs explode i have really big energy and i've learned how to pull that in but when i was little i didn't know how um <laughs> and we're talking the big old old box tvs we my mom couldn't take me into appliance stores and stuff because <laughs> everything would stop everything would quit working i couldn't have electronics in my room as a kid mm -hmm. um light bulbs would explode tvs would quit working radios would go on or off or what I, nothing worked yeah. right around me so um it was learning how to contain that and i just figured it out by myself well and when you're teaching kids how to do that you're going to empower them which is going to cross over into other areas absolutely it kind of bleeds over but it it's most of all letting them know that they're not broken they're not crazy they're totally okay and they're just a little different and their difference is but okay everybody's different everybody's so different, different in their own way but it's it's really important to let them know that not everybody needs to know like that's really critical too because when kids are little they're all really open mm -hmm. but then they all start closing off and then the ones that choose not to and the ones that choose to keep their gifts mm -hmm. um they don't need to be telling everybody that they can see so and so's grandma standing behind them, um, because it's not one. It's not always an appropriate time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's again teaching them how to function with their gifts in conjunction instead of fighting it constantly, but letting them know you need to trust who to trust. Listen to your discernment on who to tell and trust and who not to, which can be challenging because they want to fit in and they want to be accepted mm -hmm. so they're like hey look what i can do this is cool mm -hmm. yeah no little johnny doesn't need to levitate the pencil off the desk because that's going to freak some people out <laughs> well and i you know i'm super practical because i'm earth i i just am so there's also a place to you know teaching kids you know like you were saying the people skills um yeah. not that they're at fault for the bullying no. but I think there's a place for us as parents, as um, teachers, whatever capacity we're in, to really advocate and to create um, an environment that doesn't allow that. So um, my kids have experienced bullying, and uh, it's a tough situation. So I feel for anybody that's going through that for anything. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, what's, what's kind of interesting, too, is... Even even kids that feel like they're on the outskirts, they always find their tribe. And I, and I know and I'm not negating the bullying piece because I was bullied as a kid. I was the fat kid. What are you talking about? <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> um, but you always you always find your tribe. You always find your people. Right. And and you'll find your group to fit into. But a lot of it's just um, getting that social aspect. But if you empower them. It's to going know to bleed over. who they're, yep. who they are, what their power and authority is, 
and what gifts they have and abilities. And again, they come out piecemeal so that we can adjust and then, you know, whatever. Take a rainbow children class with Sarah. She's amazing. Um, you know, there's, there's all these other things that are open now. Um, that we can do but it's really about empowering them and like she said that bleeds over into all other areas and aspects of their life um, you know if if I keep thinking you know well not now but at the beginning of the journey you know my sister and I had that conversation of can you imagine how different our lives would be right now if we'd had that support yeah could you imagine it's almost scary to think about to be honest um, yeah. but it, it would have been way different, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, that could be good or bad, depending on choices made, right? So, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways we were saved from a lot of exploitation and or uh, further abuse. Um, you know, my sister shared a story with me that I went, get the fuck out. But I knew it was true because I could feel it. And so you know, there's the good and the bad in everything. Um, I believe that my mom made a lot of choices, um, because she felt like it was the best thing. Um, some of it was and her she own said shit, fear. too. She had fear. fear, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean... How much fear have we cleared from us? Oh, dude. Right? Dude. So, here, here's another question. Yeah. Okay, this will... I think this is probably the last one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you can put the questions on here, and they may be questions for different times mm -hmm. you know because we had some from the last one that happened but if we are amanda amanda i'm uh -huh. i'm probably saying it wrong i'll just Man. say amanda okay mm -hmm. if we're contracted in this life to walk and figure out on our own do we have our own people and guides everybody does love everybody i, I call them your peeps right everybody and has everybody peeps. everybody has guardian angels everybody has thank you archangels that that step in primarily um, everybody has Jesus, Buddha, all the ascended masters at, at, at your help. Um, everybody has spirit guides. Everybody has ancestors that have crossed over. Which can change depending on your spiritual growth. Absolutely. Yep. You, your, your spirit guides and your guardian angels can do mm -hmm. a, a change out. Sometimes there is a changing of the guard, if you will. Um, it, that just depends, and we'll get into that later. <laughs> another one. There's another one. Changing of the guards. Right. Um, I think that goes with like the old death door. Ooh. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, <laughs> we have a list. <laughs> We're running list about stuff. Um, but um, mm. you know, those those do swap out and change um, sometimes when we get to certain divine timings or choices made. Um, but everybody has their peeps. I I just call it the peeps. So for me personally, for me. It's my dad, uh, my mom, when every now and again, um, my guide, Eric, he was human as well, um, Archangel Azrael always, um, but then I ha I call him a Fab Five. Take a deep breath, because <laughs> it's about to get really intense. I call him my Fab Five. Okay. Gently, gently, guys. Holy cow. I know. I know. I, these are my Fab Five. Did you just call these all in? I what are you thinking? I thought about them, and they all started oh coming in. I can't help it. I can't help Ooh. it. I haven't even said their names yet. I just thought it in my head. The Fab Five are here. The Fab Five are here, and that's Archangel Uriel, oh, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, oh. <laughs> Archangel Michael. Lord, okay, don't laugh at me too bad. Oh. Oh. And you're I'm not the, making this and up. And the big one is Jericho. Oh, he's the big boy. Oh. Those so we're not making this up. When we're no. having this visceral reaction. If you were here, you'd feel it too. I don't have much hair in my body, but what I do is all standing on end. Um, oh my gosh. They're all here. <coughs> those those are my big boys. And so um, th those are my main go-to peeps, actually. Um, but it, it's about building that relationship because everything is about faith and trust. And they want... Yeah, they want to be in relationship with you. You have to ask. You have to ask. They cannot mm -hmm. do anything that imposes on free will. Not even my mom and dad. Like, if I'm sitting here pissing and moaning because I'm fat and I want to lose weight, but I'm going to sit in from this plate of cookies, and if I pick one up, they're not going to be like, don't do that. They can't. Because if it's my free will to shove my face full of cookies, they can't impose on that. 
And so, um, you know, you have to ask for their assistance and guidance. Um, and, and they'll give it gladly. You have to ask for protection. They can't just step in and do that. They can't. When I rolled my car and it was on its side, all the, the windows had busted in and out. I was covered in glass in a skirt, just got off work and I'm on the beltway outside DC and I've got four lanes of traffic doing 70 miles an hour bearing down on me. And I was like, oh, and the car was on its side. I was looking out where the windshield should have been going. I just closed my eyes and said, Jesus, I don't want to feel a thing. Just make it quick. And at that point, the car literally, and it was at a dead stop. The car literally dropped down on all four tires. And I wiggled out of the car. Yeah. That's another one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but had I, you know, you know what I'm saying? But they were there. He was there. I could feel him. I could feel the angels. And just so you know, that's the night I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. Wow. I was actually pregnant with my daughter. I suspected, but I didn't have any hard proof. Right. Um, I got it that night. I was actually pregnant with my daughter, Taylor. Um, and so, again, all all things for a reason. There's a purpose for everything. But you, 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 again, ha it's about you taking your power and authority and doing what you need to do for you. There is no right or wrong. This isn't a lecture. It, there is no right or wrong. But I call them my peeps every day. All I the do. Time. Not, not the Fab Five generally, but I do call them in at night. Because they stand watch over my house. Mm -hmm. Jericho stands in the basement. He stays in the basement. Because I have tunnels under my house. And so it's the icky EU super highway here in Butte. And so he stands guard so nothing can come up through my house. Um, and then Azrael's always in my room with uh, Jesus. And then Michael's, or Uriel's usually on the roof. Michael's in the backyard. Gabriel's in the front yard. And Raphael is in the house just patrolling that's the house it's in the house guys <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah. that's the way we roll yeah i ain't messing around <laughs> so are you alone no never and if you've contract to be alone do you have to stay alone no, no. and and here's the other thing amanda i i don't feel like you did contract to be alone to to work things out um yeah, and I'm getting a no on that. I'm, I'm feeling like it might be a belief that you're holding right now, um, but I don't feel like that was the intention. Now, I feel like there's probably some lessons that you need to learn on your own. We all do. God knows. I, girl, Guys, I could go on for hours about the shit that I've gone through. This is just like some of the bigger events, let me tell you. Um, yeah, there, mine was a huge abbreviated oh, version. Dude, seriously. I mean... I think we could write like several books on all the shit that we've done. <laughs> honest, quite honestly, and that's not being an asshole. That's just being honest. As everybody does. We all have <laughs> absolutely, a book. So. absolutely. We all have the stories. We all have stories of our life, and we all have stories of our journey and our awakening. And it it's fascinating to me, honestly. Um, but and and with that being said, I do believe that there are a lot of lessons that we contract with, right? Because there's things that we want to learn. But you don't have to do it by yourself. And so if you feel like you have to, that's an obligation or an oath or a promise. And we can totally work on that because you don't need to have that. Um, we weren't, we were never created to be solitary, individual, all on our own kind of people. It's about finding community and finding your people. And some of us have lessons that we come in, which is all about karmic buildup and about um, limiting beliefs. Some of us have lessons that literally we're here to learn to not try one to fit with other crowds not to be alone but to allow ourselves to be supported and loved by our tribe and that does that might be one or two people it might not be 50 people um that's okay yeah and and so then it comes down to hmm extreme discernment and trust really again yeah, trusting trusting your intuition on knowing who to be 
vulnerable with and who not to. Yeah. Because not everybody deserves to be in your inner circle of friends either. It's been um, a huge journey. For oh, me. that's been a big one for me too. And I and I know I've done not a lot alone. for my stuff. And that's what we were talking about last time about finding the support in the community that can support you without all that other stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and mm-hmm. and you know, not to sound like a jerk, but. Um, just because they're family doesn't mean they need to be in your inner bubble either. It's true. You can love them. Absolutely. It doesn't mean they're in your inner you bubble. Can love them from a distance. Trust me, I'm the youngest of 12. <laughs> they're, other than my sister, mm-hmm. they're all at a distance. <laughs> but I can tell you, there is nobody, when we're looking at, <coughs> at, at the sole purpose and the flow of that, there's not one person that is here to be alone. Absolutely. I can tell you, 100%. There is not one. And I get a clear, oh, oh, yeah, that's a huge yes. Yeah. That's a huge yes. Yeah. So, um, but it is a very old um, belief system. It and is. sometimes there are paths we walk alone, and there's nothing wrong with solitude. And there's a difference between loving, like I love my space. I'm also an introvert to, that can be an extrovert, but then I go back to being an introvert. Oh, me too. I love my yeah. cave tent. And, and, yeah. and I'm single like a Pringle with nowhere to mingle, right? And have been for almost three and four years now um before that relationship of four years i was single on with it with purpose on purpose for like 14 years to raise my kids and i was totally okay with it <laughs> right i had those moments where i wanted somebody in my life and i want somebody in my life now but i want the right somebody in my life um and so, so not compromising on that right that's so important right and and but then there's moments where i'm like oh i'm really kind of glad i'm single because I don't know that I'd want anybody around me right now <laughs> as my kids are gone and doing their thing, right? Because I do enjoy that downtime and that quiet time, and I do enjoy... Uh, when I'm home by myself, I don't turn TV on. I don't watch TV. Um, and I'm not judging for anybody that does. I just... I don't. Um, I find other things to do. Um, and so... Because if I turn the TV on, I ain't getting nothing done. It'll suck me in because it's mindless. Amanda said, yes, by the way. <laughs> and Lisa says, wowza. You ladies are so awesome. I love you. So, anyway, that's okay. that's that. But you're not alone and you're not broken. So, to wrap it up, the last question I hear I have to ask you. Oh, boy. Now that, I don't know why that makes me nervous, but it does. Man, they've been... Do, 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 do. Okay. Jericho, yes. Oh, I don't know why he's telling me I have to ask it, but so what is <laughs> what is your passion as a healer? What is it that you bring to this as a healer? Whoa, hey. Oof. For me, I don't that makes me want to cry. <clears throat> um convey your passion to us as a healer. <laughs> <laughs> um for me, it's so that every single person on this planet gets the help that they so need, want, and desire. Because it's all in divine timing. And everybody knows when that time is right for them. I want every single person that comes to me that that I see, I want to help them every single way that I can. They have to heal themselves. But I absolutely want and I'm willing to help facilitate the healing for them. All they have to do is grasp it. All they have to do is be willing. Why? Because all the people that I went to that could have helped me and didn't. And I never want anyone to feel like that. That was so heartbreaking and soul crushing to me. It was extremely frustrating and disappointing all the same. Now, I, I, I couldn't have felt any more devastated. In fact, I think that crushed me more than going through the divorce, to be honest. Honestly, and that's all bullshit, haha aside. That was absolutely crushing to me because I didn't know. I mean, I, my soul knew what was going on, but my brain, because um, I was very left brain logic, right? My brain could not wrap around what was going on with me. 
and I was you seeking help. I needed, needed I needed a lot of help and I needed answers. You deserved it. I needed guidance. I needed somebody to step out of their damn paradigm of competition and help me. That's what I needed. Two people I didn't even know. Well, you're much stronger than I am. I don't even know what the fuck I am. How can I? I don't care about that. Help well, we're me. We're always going to find people that have absolutely more expansive, intuitive abilities than we do. But that doesn't mean they know what to do with it. Right, and it doesn't mean they're better than, less than, That's or right. anything else. And and you know, and we all shine absolutely because there's no competition. We just need to be here to truly, honestly, authentically help one another love one another and not I mean I, I tell creator all the time creator some of your kids man <laughs> they need time out not all are easy to love but everybody deserves that 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 is a basic human right and if I can do the smallest thing it really is that ripple I I am not a Teresa Caputo no ma'am um, however I have had moments where I've walked into places and I'm like, oh. and I knew that I absolutely had to give a message. Is it comfortable? No, no. but I do it. Um, I, I do it. I, I think I already shared that story about the, the girl in Walmart during the first lockdown quarantine. Did I share that? I don't know if I did. Young girl, my son and I was late at night. Um, the, not long from they were going to close, about an hour before they were going to close. We ran in to grab some groceries because it was pretty empty. And so um, this was during the first quarantine. And we went through the aisles and we went down this one aisle. And he's my kid. He can't hide either. He's six eight. Um, but he's my kid that's like, if I just don't acknowledge it, it didn't happen. Although he's extremely intuitive. He's truly a human lie detector. We're walking down the aisles. And here's one of these girls, young girl, probably college kid, maybe high school. I don't know. Um, stocking shelves and she feels like the wet dog that had just been kicked out and whooped repeatedly that that was what her energy felt like and as we were walking as we we're getting because as soon as we walked into the aisle I went oh and my son looked at me I was like do you feel that and he goes uh so do we need that because he didn't want to acknowledge his mom's doing her thing again so we start walking closer to the girl as we're getting stuff along the way and he looks at me and I looked at him and I stopped and he was like so he stepped back so it wasn't uncomfortable for this girl and I looked at her and legitly she was kind of in standing in front of what I needed and I said hey pumpkin um would you mind since you're right there could you grab me a couple of those and she looked and she was like uh -huh, no eye contact She's turned around, she grabbed him, and I felt this wave of nobody fucking notices me unless they need something. Which made me want to cry. She's a young girl, college, maybe. And so I got the jars and I said, Thank you so much. And she, no eye contact. And so I, I put them in the cart. My son looked at me and he backed up. <laughs> clearing out here. Poor Taylor. He backed up to the edge of the the aisle and I just stood there and the, I just stood there. I didn't say where word. I just stood there. And then the girl stopped and she looked at me and she put her head up and I said I see you. I do see you. Ooh. This made me cry. <laughs> I said I do see you and I want you to know you're doing an amazing job and what you're doing does matter I'm grateful I'm grateful for the help you just gave me I'm super grateful that you're here doing this job and I'm sure you haven't heard this a lot and especially probably not today but I appreciate all your hard work and what you're doing I value you as a person and the job that you're doing people are assholes don't let them get you down and don't let them kick you I appreciate you. Mm. And she looked at me and she smiled and it was the most beautiful smile that I've seen. And I looked at her, I said, can I give you a hug? And she was like, mm. and I gave her a big hug. I'm like, I don't give no shits about the quarantine at this point. 
this little girl needed help. She needed love. She needed to know that she's not alone and that she's noticed. Fast forward three weeks. Taylor and I, we just do the late runs. We, people, ugh. <laughs> Walmart, <ugh. laughs> Three weeks later, Taylor and I are walking through Walmart, grabbing a few groceries, and I hear, it is you. And I turn, and it's that same young girl. And she comes running up to me. And Taylor looked and just gently walked away. And, oh, I want to back up really quickly. So after I, I give that girl a hug, and I said, you got this. It's going to be okay. Trust me. It's going, everything's going to be okay. Just hang in there. When, when I walked away and caught up to my son, which he wasn't that, he never that far away, um, he, he was really quiet, and I was like, are you okay, son? And he was like, that was really nice, Mom. She really needed that. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I was trying not to cry, and I was like, she really did. Mm -hmm. That was important. More, more than, you I think. shifted her off the path that she was on. Totally. So now, flash forward three weeks, Taylor's with me again. We're really not hard to miss. <laughs> so we're bombing down an aisle of Walmart, and it is you. And she comes running, her feet <laughs> down the aisle. And I turn, and there's this girl, and she's beaming. Um, and I was like, hey, pumpkin, how are you? And she goes, good. And she kind of looked, and Taylor just gently walked, <laughs> walked forward. <laughs> he walked forward. Um, but I could feel his energy still with me. So, um, um, this girl was like, how are you doing? I said, wow, you look, you look pretty, uh, peppy. I said, how are you doing, kiddo? And she looked at me and she said, I've been watching for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have been? And she goes, yeah. She goes, I said, I can do this without crying. She goes, I wanted to thank you for noticing me that day. She goes, I had had such a bad week and such an awful day. She goes, I was going to kill myself that night. Oh, that's why I heard she got on a different path when you did that. Mm -hmm. You literally because saved your life. Because nobody cared. I felt like absolutely nobody cared. She goes, I, I had a plan. I was going to get off work and I was going to do it. And I just looked at her and I said, I'm really glad that you're here. And she said, me too. She goes, things have gotten so much better. And so, you know, we started talking and whatever. Um, she's just beautiful. Now when I see her, she waves. It. When I see her at Walmart, she's still there. Um, you know, but she she needed that. I, you know, and at that moment, it was like, I knew, I could feel that she needed it. But this isn't about, this is about you taking that first step. Have courage to do the prompts that you're prompted to. When you get those nudges and urges and, and, and pushes to do those things, they, they may not always be comfortable, but there's an absolute necessary reason for that. Absolutely. And, and, if, and this is where we talk about choices, right? Had I chose to keep my mouth shut and keep on rolling, things may have been different. Big time. And that's a whole nother ripple. Yeah. That's a whole nother ripple. Um, it, it's not always that traumatic or dramatic either. I've, I've walked into places and the kid behind the counter was like, uh, <laughs> awkward. Do you believe in angels? <laughs> He's like, we both had that. Yeah. That's he's a, like, that's another one. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, good. I have a message for you. Oh. And I gave him the message. And he goes, sweet. And I was like, is that resonating? He goes, somebody just told me this like two days ago. I said, there's your confirmation validation. He goes, thank you. I needed that. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So there's that. So is that why you're a healer? To, to empower people to heal themselves and to move forward in a positive way and to release themselves from all the negative baggage and, and shit that we come in with, but 
that we accumulate in this lifetime. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't imagine not. I mean, I, I just We have can't. the best job in the world. I love it's what It's not I, a job, it's a passion. No, I love what I get to do. It's yeah. It doesn't freaking amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. You have something you want to share with them? No. Just you do you, boo boo. Like do the things that that bring you joy and um, don't don't let other people define who you are. It's about getting to know who you are and 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 being okay with who you are. And if you're not okay with it, what areas do you need to change or what areas do you want to change? I was a huge, huge introvert. Like, dude, no, I'm not so much. I can flip into that, mm -hmm. but I'm, I, I can be an extrovert too. And so that was an area I wanted to shift. So start taking those, shift? start taking those action do? steps. Yeah. But don't let others define who you are. Only, only you have that power and authority unless you give it to them and it's not theirs to own or to have. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. That's it. So let's go ahead and, so when we're on something like this, even though there's not an intentional connection of energy, there is a connection of energy. Um, so I'm just going to connect in. We've been in sacred space. I'm just going to create our evolve it is. It is, whew. just want to express my gratitude for you being here and for all the guides and the angels and the ancestors being here. Thank you for supporting us and guiding us. Thank you for bringing in the guides and the angels of the other people who have been listening and watching and supporting um, so that they might feel loved during this. Uh, please know that all of your guides stepped in for you guys too. Mm -hmm. um, it's an absolutely beautiful energy. So creator of all that is, thank you for that. Thank you for this loving support. Thank you for this sacred space. And this is really interesting, but I'm hearing to ask for healing energy and love for all of our guides to express yes. our gratitude, to express our gratitude to divine. Always. Oh, all right. Creator of all that is, please send that. Thank you. All right. And so with that, we separate all of our energies. We cleanse our spaces. Oh, and we stand in the space of pure, unconditional love. Creator of all that is, thank you so much. Aho. Amen. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>